Hello. Uh, this week in the Portland startup news, you, you have a new mayor. You have an entirely new city council, which is still kind of being decided. You never can tell. Like, <laughs> I put my notes under the wrong section. <laughs> Give me a sec. Can I have a second? Okay, cool. I'm, I'm pulling it up to where it should be. Let me tell you the story here. But unfortunately for you, you have the same old monotone, nasally recap of what's happening in the Portland startup community. Some things never change, <laughs> but others do. So let's get going on the news this week. Again, I, I don't know. There might have been some other noise happening throughout the week, but I still tried to capture some of the startup stories that are happening, not only in the community, but throughout the state. Keep you up to date on what's going on. First and foremost, if you're raising a VC fund, if you're an existing VC fund, uh, by VC, I mean venture capital, <laughs> if you are in that role in the community and you would like the state of Oregon to give you a little money to invest in Oregon-based companies, they've just opened up another request for quotes on that. Business Oregon often goes out and looks for people I don't know what's going on with my voice. <laughs> apparently, apparently you don't get monotone. You get this like squeaky voice this week. Anyway, so State of Oregon, Business Oregon often goes out with a request for quotes to venture capital funds where the state of Oregon can play the role of LP, provide some money, give you some additional money to invest. But the uh, the only stipulation being that that money needs to be invested in an Oregon company and it needs to have a one for one kind of match. So you go to the state of Oregon, you're like, hey, we would like to take a million dollars from you to invest in Oregon companies. And they're like, fine, show us the other million dollars that you have so that there's two million dollars being invested. Pretty straightforward. If you're in the VC world, this is nothing new to you, but just wanted to highlight that for funds that are looking to invest in the amazing companies in Oregon, Business Oregon has some capital to put to work for you. So please check that out. I'll link it up below so you know where to go for more information. But that's kind of a rolling thing. Like I think the deadline was like 2029 or something. Like it's something that happens on a consistent basis. So always come to the state of Oregon when you're looking for LPs or, or additional capital, and then invest that money right here in Oregon and the amazing startups that are being built here. So I know people are just asking you to vote for a lot of stuff. I'm gonna ask you to subscribe. It's like a vote you can take back. You could vote subscribe for me now. And if you're like, no, then you can just take it back later. Speaking of venture funds, our friend Caroline Lewis, at Rogue Women took the opportunity this week to just reiterate that like women are really good at running venture scale companies and they tend to provide an outsized return when they receive investment. So she just wanted to take the opportunity, given all the things that are going on, to say that Rogue Women remains steadfast in their goal to invest in women-led startups. They will also, I'm sure, continue their fellowship program, which has been really valuable to help people learn the ropes of venture capital. But, uh, you know, huge fan of Caroline Lewis and, and Rogue Women. So uh, if you are a woman building a startup in Portland or in Oregon, uh, please, chat with Caroline. Uh, she has been just a, a really important part of our ecosystem and re again, remains committed to helping women founders find the capital they need to build the startups they want to build. Speaking of supporting startups, <laughs> my, my segues are just awful. I apologize. I have awful segues, but you're, you're probably used to it. So uh, speaking of supporting startups, the Oregon Startup Center, which you'd be like, I, I don't know, I've never heard of the Oregon Startup Center. Oregon Startup Center used to be called the OTBC 
in Beaverton, they have launched this new project that's a nonprofit incubator. So if you're trying to build a nonprofit, trying to bring something to market in terms of a nonprofit, which I'm really excited about, quite frankly, because like we had thought about doing something like this from my Pi days. We thought about doing a, an interesting kind of nonprofit incubator. We didn't get very far. We got we were able to work with a few nonprofits didn't really come to fruition so i'm excited to see that it is coming to fruition in beaverton i'm equally excited to see that a pi alum mark lewis has been has been tasked with leading that project and and i he he, he reflected that he's been reading the pi cookbook and going through that and i look forward to, to catching up with him and learning more so if you are building a nonprofit, or you have an interest in starting a nonprofit that could help the broader community, you may want to look into the Oregon Startup Center Nonprofit Incubator. Mark's great. I know he will help provide the support that you need to get that thing off the ground. Tons of experience with like public sector and, and nonprofits and those kind of things. So if you're thinking about starting a nonprofit, which many of us do, please look into the Oregon Startup Center Nonprofit Incubator now being run by Mark Lewis. Our friends at AI Portland, Silicon Florist, proud sponsor of AI Portland, love what they're doing. As soon as they started, I was like, how can I help? And they're like, well, you can help by sponsoring. So, so I did that and uh, continue to sponsor. I just, after, you know, I realized that we were getting near the end of the year, I was like, how can I re-up for next year? How can I be a sponsor? If you'd like to be a sponsor, please reach out to them. I'm happy to, to connect those dots if you need that help, because what they're doing is amazing. The community is really benefiting from it. One of the ways the community benefited was our senior senator, at the federal level, Ron Wyden, super active, like the most internet savvy, startup savvy senator, politician I've I've ever encountered. He took the opportunity to sit down with the, the AI Portland folks, did kind of a fireside chat. I wasn't able to make the event, but thankfully our friends at AI Portland were able to capture it on video so you can watch the the whole thing hear what uh senator wyden has to say about ai and and his work around tech and startups really well worth your time to listen to it uh it, again senator wyden has been a huge proponent for startups and and really the 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 world of the web and social and all those things that that now exist are really predicated on some legislation that Ron Wyden helped establish. So always thankful to our senator and uh, highly encourage you to take the opportunity to listen to what he has to say about the world of AI. So this was a bit of a surprise. Uh, <laughs> Silicon Flores, the blog that, that is basically me, me writing my script for this every week these days. Like no one really reads the blog anymore. It's just like me keeping notes about what's going on. And then and then at the end of the week, I show up and I'm like, let me read through all these notes of the stuff I captured during this week. Well, <laughs> that blog has a job board. It was, at times, that job board is crazy. There are a lot of positions open and people posting and like getting gigs and that kind of thing. But as you may have noticed, like not so many jobs available as of late so it's always it's always nice to see people posting to the job board this time around it was lean path they have a vp position and a director position open lean path beaverton company they're not really startup -y, but they're definitely tech um you know they've been around for 20 years now yeah technically you could still be a startup because startups don't really have a timeline but uh, probably more in the established company, established organization, but they are hiring for a VP and director role. And so if, if food uh, waste and sustainability are issues that are important 
to you and you believe you have the credentials, I highly recommend you take a look at the job posts on the Silicon Force job board to see if you can land a new gig with LeanPath. Our friends at Oregon Venture Fund have another pitch event. They've really been doing a great job of like putting these pitch events together. I think they recognize a need in the community that people want to gather. They want to see what's being built here and they really need like more opportunities to see that happening. So, uh, you know, they've done the, the fast pitch kind of events that are like, tell us what you're doing in under 10 seconds. I don't know. It's like two minutes, three minutes. I don't know. It's short. They have short, fast pitch events, but they also have these AI pitch events. And that's the next one that's happening on Wednesday, November 13th. Companies already been selected for the AI pitch, but they may not have sold out for attendees. So if you would like to see who's building what in Portland around AI, this could be a really good opportunity to do that. Thank you, OVF, for putting these things together and bringing the community together. I wanted to read off the companies that will be pitching at that event on Wednesday, November 13th. They are Slip, Asylum Vision, Rewire AI, Augmented AI, and a familiar one, Rapirio Health, which, uh, you know, we've covered Rapirio Health from time to time. Uh, again, not surprised to see them there, but I'm like, oh, Rapirio Health. We know them. So uh, established, kind of established startup doing have been doing work here for a while but again uh ovf portland ai demo night wednesday november 13th so we have community events you know that are based around programming like a fireside chat with senator ron wyden talking about ai or people pitching their solutions to the crowd but what about a good old-fashioned networking event well if that's what you're in the mood for, I have good news for you. There's a new and old to Portland tech meetup that is happening November 21st at Netspace. Really just a community gathering. Like you don't, there's no, there's no presentations or, or format. Just show up to Netspace, which is the longest running co-working space in Portland. It's been running a long time and it survived the pandemic and all the things. So uh, if you are interested in just connecting with people who maybe been in the tech industry, maybe they're new here, maybe you're new here, maybe you're old here, doesn't matter. Show up to this meetup on November 21st to connect with just some other people in the community, just face to face, just hang out, just get to meet some people. And, and, and you know, Go into that holiday season with some new people on your holiday card list. I don't know. Just show up, meet some people. The community needs social fabric and connection. So please go do that. If you have time to show up to that meetup and hang out and meet some people, I'm sure it would be appreciated. <sighs> yeah, it's it's been a week. There's been a lot going on. A lot of changes, a lot of things happening. I hope you're holding up and hanging in there. Until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.